think Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear Bergeron Briefs. My name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, you may have seen some of these shows before. Um, I do a series of shows to supplement the seminars and other things that I do to present issues that are concerned to elders. And as you know, the purpose of the Bergeron Briefs is to interview people and get you to know people who may be involved in issues that are directly relevant to you. And Michael Murphy is one of those people. Uh, Michael is from the Murphy Insurance Agency and is a grand, is the third generation That's from the correct. agency. So Michael, uh, for, to start off, just tell us a little bit about who are you, um, how did you get involved in the business? That's kind of easy in this case. Sure. Uh, and what's the business about? Sure. So I'm actually third generation, as you alluded to. Uh, my grandfather started the business in 1937. Uh, unfortunately, my grandfather passed away at a fairly young age, 1963, I believe. Yeah. That wasn't born until 1966. My dad has run the business since 1960, and now my brother and I work there, so we're both third generation. Um, we are what I would traditionally call a Main Street property casualty agency. Yeah. Uh, we have seven locations, one here in the city of Marlboro, one in Hudson, Bolton, Harvard, Groton, Menden, Medway. So you're part of what you really be developed into kind of a regional presence. That's correct. Yeah. yeah, right along the 495 belt is primarily where our offices are. Yeah. And we split our business between what, what I would call commercial customers, businesses, and families. We have about 24,000 families that we do business with. 24,000? That's correct, yeah. It's a lot of folks. Yeah, it would be a little different than 1937. Makes for a lot of phone calls during the day, I bet. It you know? does, but we have a great team. We have some folks, clearly, I don't do it all. Right. Um, we have a great team of folks who really um, are dedicated to trying to provide the best service possible and, yep. frankly, the best advice. And by the way, once again, this, is, this particular show is primarily focused on Marlboro folks. Um, so if you've got a problem and you've had an accident or whatever, you're in Marlboro, you can always go to the Marlboro office, right? Even though your headquarters are in Correct. In Cor Hudson? Correct. Right. You can always go into our physical location, yep. which is right here on Main Street. Uh, but if you're a Murphy customer, you can go to any one of our locations. We have one um, computer system um, that, you know, we can identify the client. Um, Candidly, we know a lot of our clients, so you know when they walk in, we know who they are, which is a great feeling. Yes, I'm I mean, always amazed by that. By how one of the best feelings are. about being in a family business is you get to. It goes beyond just a client, you know, business client relationship. It, it's their friends. Right. You actually get to know them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the reason why I invited you on the show is to talk. It's winter time, mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted you to talk about a couple of issues that are of obvious concern to a lot of us, but especially to seniors during the winter. Sure. One of them is car accidents. Right. One of them is slip and falls. Right. right? So let's talk about car accidents. Sure. So, you know, many, many, many of my clients are driving, still driving, mm -hmm. want to be driving until they de they're dead. You sure. Know? I understand. Um, so now they get, they get involved in an accident. Mm -hmm. And the am accident is ambiguous, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, maybe they were at fault, maybe somebody else was, but they're in the accident, the other person is there. First of all, just tell them, what do they do? What do you do? You're in the accident. Great, great, great question. So I think the, the, the primary focus is to be safe, right? You're involved in the accident. You know, you, obviously you're probably on a street. You want to try to get someplace where you're safe. Um, I think you want to stay calm. If there's any medical needs that need to be attended to, I think that's the primary focus. Yep. Yeah. Um, generally, the local police will respond. I think it's always a good idea to call them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, granted, they're very busy these days, so sometimes they can't always respond. Mm -hmm. But if they do respond, then that gives a third-party perspective of getting the information. The most important thing is to get that information. And, and, and by the way, do the police have to be there? Are you required to wait for the, the police? The law response? says that if you feel that there's, and I think the, the threshold is $500, it may yeah. be higher at this point, anything yeah. above $500 and 
property damage yeah. that you, you should call the police. You do have to, you're absolutely required to complete a police report. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a good uh, practice. It is important to call the police um, because you don't know if a person's injured. You know, a person may get out of a car and say, I'm fine, but they may be suffering injuries that you're not aware of. Those that show up later on. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's important to get someone to memorialize what happened. Yeah. And I think that the other thing is just to stay calm. You know, these things do happen, they're not commonplace. Fortunately yeah. for most of us, we don't have an accident every day. And so um, when it does happen, it's kind of un unusual. Um, but you just want to stay calm, and you just want to present the facts. And I suppose at this point, so many people have cell phones that you, you do have the ability to actually literally call the police as absolutely. opposed to waiting and hoping that a cruiser goes by. Sure, right. so, absolutely, so that's absolutely. Easy. And I think that, uh, it, again, I can't reiterate enough, I think that's important to do that. You know, yep. again, uh, given the fact that the police departments are very busy these days, they may not send a cruiser down, but at least you've called them to make them aware of it. Yep. Um, and then from there, there's some required paperwork. There's what they call the Massachusetts Crash Report. Um, we have them in our office, but they're also available at any local police station. You can also get them online. Yeah. And it's just, it's a four page form that asks for some specific information, including some biographical information, yeah. as well as a written description of what happened. And I always um, counsel people to just, just really think about what happened. Just, um, just so that um, when they do write it, it's 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 based on what happened. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a pretty yep. high stressful moment when you're involved in that accident. Sure is. Um, and, and does that police report have? Do you have to go to the police station to file that police report? You don't. Um, we actually, for our clients, yeah. once they complete the report, they get it to us, and then from there, it is required to send a copy to the police and to the registry, which we'll do for our clients. I get it. I get okay. it. And in addition to that, do you, are you required to send a copy to your insurance company? You should, absolutely, because obviously the next role would be to involve the insurance company. Yep. And whether it's bodily injury that was caused as a result of the accident or the damage to your vehicle or depending upon the situation, the damage to another person's vehicle, yep. that's when the process of going through the claim happens. Once you've completed the initial paperwork, once yep. you've kind of left the scene and every year everybody's okay, then you're gonna begin the process of notifying your insurance company. And then what an insurance company does at that point is they may ask for some additional information yep. because they're trying to ascertain what happened. Yep. And then from there, depending upon what the damages are, um, if you have what we call first party coverage or collision coverage, mm -hmm. so you may not be at fault, however, you sustain damage to your vehicle. If you have collision, what we recommend is that you go through your own insurance because it's faster. Obviously, mm -hmm. the goal is to get your car repaired immediately. Yep. And then, um, then behind the scenes, your insurance company will subrogate or get the money back from the other person's insurance company. And so you don't have to be worried about that part? No. That's the thing yeah. that I think a lot of people stress over is, you know, gee, do I have to go after the other person's insurance company? No. That's something that is part of the process that the insurance company takes care of. So that eliminates that stress. I see. Which is a good thing. Um, once an adjuster has notified you, um, the process of looking at your car, if the car is, is physically damaged, yep. is pretty straightforward. An adjuster goes, goes out, looks at the damage. One thing to keep in mind is that it's on a visible damage estimate because they don't have the ability right there, say in a parking lot, to look at the damage. So they'll write what they think is the damage. Yep. I tell everybody, don't panic if you feel that that number is too low. What happens is once that initial estimate goes to the body shop of your choice, then the body person and the insurance company work out the unseen damage. I see. So, so it's the, called a supplement. So the first piece is that you actually get to the adjuster and you mm -hmm. have the adjuster for the insurance company do something. Correct. Or do, do an estimate. And then at that point you go to the body shop or you take it to the and, and try, exactly to get, correct. try to get the repairs done. Exactly correct. I get it. One of the things that um, a lot of people don't buy, and yeah. it's certainly something that we try to do in the agency, is what we call supplemental transportation or rental coverage. Yeah. Um, clearly, if you're at fault and you don't have rental, if your vehicle is damaged, that time in which the vehicle is being repaired, you then have to pay for rental under your own cost. I see. Yep. If you can identify a third party that's responsible, then their insurance company may pay for that rental, again, depending upon the circumstances. 
Um, rentals are fairly inexpensive coverage, and I have to tell you that those who have it are grateful because it eliminates the stress of having to worry about whether, I mean, a rental car um, cost daily is probably between $35 and $50 a day. So if your car's laid up for 10 days or 15 days or 20 days, right. that can be significant money. That can be significant money. Right. right. So I think so that... The, so it's the kind of risk that you can insure again. Correct. And I think a lot of people don't buy it because they figure, you know, a lot of people candidly don't think they're going to have an accident. Or right. in, and in some cases, if you have a vehicle that you have access to, yeah. then you may not need it. But if you don't, clearly I think it's important to it's have. It's really, really important. Yeah. And I think it's one of those small coverages that people overlook but I think you really have to look at it.